Good morning. Here's Lucinda Gabriel from Blanc Sablon. Uh, we are Sunday, the 30th of December. And today I have a topic that I want to share with you that's on my heart. And it's not an easy topic to discuss because it's something that a lot of people don't even want to hear about. So uh, I'm going to wait to see if there's anybody uh, listening so far. I'll give it a few minutes for people to, to show up. And um, good morning, Elsie. Good morning. Thank you for being here. Gaetan, good morning. Joanne. So uh, I'm going to be doing a French uh, in about 30 minutes. Donc, juste pour ceux qui sont là en français, dans 30 minutes, je vais faire un live en français sur l'autre page. So uh, je vais revenir à vous. So uh, good morning, Gail and uh, Marianne, Louise. This morning, I want to talk about a touchy subject. And especially, you know, in my own town, because not everybody wants to hear about it. But um, it's important, you know, to talk about the truth and say real things because uh, our life depends on it. And, and, and it really does, you know. So I'm going to, to share this whether you like it or not. And uh, because if nobody ever tells you, um, how will you ever know? And this is how I felt, you know, about 10 months ago. When uh, Jesus first showed up in my life, I was like, how come nobody told me about this before? How come in 2,000 years that the Bible has been written, nobody has ever told me the truth? Why didn't I ever hear about the truth before? So I feel a responsibility to talk to you about the truth. And, uh, so, and God has really put it on my heart. And... Uh, I, wrote, I have a few notes here on the side. So if you see me looking over, it's because I have some notes that I wrote yesterday. And I want to share with you the truth because I love you. I, I, you know, honestly, I tell you, like since I said in March, I would go and hide away in the woods and be like everybody else. But God doesn't have that plan for me. He put it on my heart to speak out and evangelize, I guess you can call it. And so I feel a responsibility. And I love you, but more importantly, Jesus loves you. And I love Jesus. I really do with all my heart. And I was like really feeling that last night. <clears throat> and I, what came to me in my heart was that a lot of people think, you know, that, uh, that they have God in their life, that they have God in their heart, and they're going to go to heaven and everything is going to be fine. And a lot of you believe that you have the Holy Spirit. Well, I'm sad to tell you that a lot of you don't, and uh, what you've learned is not true, and I'm going to tell you why, because like last night when I was going to bed, I was so filled with joy, and this morning too, I wake up in the morning, I go to bed like that, I'm overflowing with joy, and I can tell you, I don't need an antidepressant, and most of you out there that are on are on antidepressants right now. If you really had Jesus in your life, if you really had the Holy Spirit inside of you, you would not need an antidepressant. You would not need anything else because he fills you up and you overflow with joy all the time. I wake up in the morning and there's a song singing in my heart. He sings to me and that's the way it's supposed to be. And if you don't have that, I'm sorry, you don't have the Holy Spirit. And anybody out there that is a, a true born-again Christian would tell you the same thing because they know, they have it in their heart, and they walk around with this joy in them all the time. It doesn't mean that we don't have a bad day or a bad moment or, uh, you know, things happen to us too, but we bounce back a lot quicker than anybody else. And it's because we can depend on Jesus, we can depend on God, and we stand on what he says. And it's so important for you guys to know this. Because, you know, I, I was sharing uh, about Jesus the other day to a friend, and she said, uh, you know, look, I don't need Jesus and, and all this. And what came to me is like, hmm, if her son had an accident today and was between life and death, who would she go to? Wouldn't she get down on her knees and pray to God? everybody would right and uh and that like really you know struck a chord with me because every one of us if something happened in our life today what we would do like what or where would we go to we would go to god we would go to jesus so why wait until something happens and the second thing that came to me lately 
uh, was, you know, like for example, a lot of you are parents. I'm not a parent, so, but I can, I know, for example, because Lord, the Lord put it on my heart. Um, you, you know, for the ones that have kids out there, if your kid went away to live somewhere else and only called you once every five years and said, you know, Ma, I need some money. Ma, I need this. Ma, I need that. And they only called you uh, when they needed you. How would you feel about that? Like, really? You know, you'd be disappointed. It's like, didn't I raise you better than that? Didn't I do a better job than that? You would be, you know, upset and disappointed, right? Well, God is upset and disappointed with you too because you don't call on him. You don't ask him for his help. He is there. He's waiting for you. And he's always been, he's always been there. And he's always been waiting for you to come to him. And the sad thing is you're only going to go to him when, um, when you're in trouble and when you really, really need him. And don't wait until then to have him in your life. Because I tell you, if you invite him into your life right now, you will have this love, this joy, this peace that surpasses all understanding, like it says in the Bible. You won't need an antidepressant. You won't need anything. And you will walk in faith. You will not walk in fear because you, you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And you know it when you're filled. And there's not a belief or not, not like, I think I have it. You know it. And there, there's no doubt uh, if you have it or not. And, um, and I want to like touch on the subject. And I know, like I said, it's a, it's a tough, touchy subject I want to talk about today. It's about the Catholic Church. And um, do you know Jesus said in the Gospel of John 34 times, that's a lot, 34 times, I am telling you the truth. I am telling you the truth. I am telling you the truth. And um, he was not loved for telling the truth. He was actually crucified. And uh, we are not supposed to be afraid of that. We're supposed to say the truth anyway. So today I want to share the truth with you because most of you um, that consider yourselves Christian, and I did too there. I'm not pointing any fingers. I did too. I was there. Look, Jesus showed up 10 months ago. And before that, I considered myself a Christian. Yeah, I believed in God. I was going to heaven. And, uh, but I can tell you, I know there's a big difference between who I was before Jesus and who I am now. And um, yeah, so I, you know, like myself as well, before 10 months ago, I didn't pick up a Bible. I actually picked it up last year in January because Jesus told me to, God told me to. and because you've never picked it up, I want to share with you what I learned in there. Because when I went to Christmas Mass, and I hummed and awed whether I should go to the Catholic Church. I was like, should I or shouldn't I? And, and when my family was going, so I decided to go with them. And when I was there, I, I, I remember why I didn't go. I didn't want to go. And, but I think I went because I needed to talk to you about it. There was a, a prayer at one point that they said, and you know, and I'm telling you this because there was like over 300 people that went to mass that night in our villages, right? And, uh, and that's not counting the people that were at home that actually believe in God, but not religion. So that means so many of you out there actually believe in God. And that's a wonderful thing because God loves you. He really does. And, but I want to tell you the truth about, you know, things that are going on in the world. For example, as I was there and I was listening to, you know, the mass, there was this penitential act, it's called, it's a confession of our sins to Almighty God and to our brothers and sisters. And it ended with a supplication to Mary, the angels and the saints to pray to the Lord for us. And that is so contrary to what Jesus taught us in the Bible. And I'm telling you, I didn't know all this either before, but you know, God, led me to the truth over the last 12 months. And you can go on YouTube, you can go on anything, uh, Google it, origins of the Catholic religion. You will find out about it. And um, you will see that in the year 1500, the early 1500s, did you know that the Catholic religion was actually kind of booted out of Europe? And I found out a movie about this called Martin Luther before I went to Denmark. And I was shocked by what I saw. And the reason why, the, this was the Germans, they booted out um, the Catholic Church is because the Catholic Church was 
um, uh, selling indulgences. That's what it was called. And what it was was a piece of paper. And, you know, they were going to the poorest of the poor of the poor that was illiterate. They didn't understand anything. And they would say, well, you know, for a coin, you could get your, your mother, your father, your sister out of purgatory, which does not even exist. Because if you read the Bible, you know that that's a lie as well. So I'm really going to tell you the whole truth. And, uh, and you may not like it, but I challenge you. I challenge each and every one of you. If you don't believe me, uh, I hope that I stir up enough in you that it makes you want to go and look for the truth for yourself. L get a Bible. And for those of you that actually live in Blanc Sablon, where I am, I have copies. Call me. Text me. I'll bring you one. And, um, and you will find it for yourself. When I started reading the New Testament, the first thing that was there that really struck me, I was shocked, I tell you. It says, but you do not be called rabbi, for, the, for one is your teacher, the Christ, and you are all brethren. And do not call anyone on earth your father, for one is your father, he who is in heaven. What do we call the priests in the Catholic Church? Father. That is so wrong. And we, people, like, we don't know that because nobody ever read the Bible. Nobody was actually encouraged to read it. And, um, and there was never, ever, ever, ever any mention in the Bible to pray to Mother Mary or the saints or whoever. And Jesus said to pray to the Father in my name. And no one goes to the Father except through me. So that means there's no other way to go to God but through Jesus Christ. That means we don't go to the Father through Mother Mary. We don't go to Jesus through Mother Mary. We don't go through anybody through Mother Mary or the saints or the angels. And maybe that's where it came from for me, where I thought it was okay to pray to the angels. And I apologize if I led you guys off on the wrong track. And the other thing that I read that really, really, really shocked me in the New Testament was, um, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the Ethan do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Do you know what that means? That means that we should not be re repeating uh, like senseless prayers, for example. And what do we do as Catholics? Well, we say the rosary. And I know some of you are not going to like this. And because you've been doing it all your life, you didn't know any better. That's what you were taught. <clears throat> and so when I read this, I was shocked that here the Catholic Church is uh, doing so many things that goes against the Bible. And I know a lot of you out there are going to say, oh, the Bible was written by man. And, you know, you all have your arguments, right? Uh, there's, there's no other book that has um, more valid information than the Bible. You can go and look at this movie. It's called The Case for Christ. There's a book, The Case for Christ. And everything you will see in it, it, it proves that the Bible is the truth. It's, it's real. Uh, Noah's Ark was real. They found it. Uh, there's a lot of things that people don't want you to know. But I tell you, if you Google enough, everything is there. Um, and so I'm just looking at my notes there because there was a lot of things that I wanted to share with you. So, you know, imagine that God is in heaven for a second and that he's listening to you. And you are there, you know, our Father, who are worth in heaven, and then you're doing your ten Hail Marys and all this stuff. That's not what he wants to hear from you. You know, if your if you're, um, child called you on the phone, like you want to know about what's, what's his day like? What's the kind of problems is he living and and how can you know you would want to uh, give you some guidance like and advice like how you know you can help and our father in heaven is exactly the same we are not called to have a religion we are called to have a relationship with god and so a relationship is uh every day you get up and you read the bible and you have a prayer you sing a song i don't know but you do something to can to have that relationship and you just don't call them you know once a week uh, when you go to church on sundays or you don't call them every five years when you know when your kids are in trouble it's a relationship that you have every day you build on that and that is 
the way to to live in this world to have peace and to have love and joy in your heart it's the only way to do it and so um you know a lot of people think that they have they have gone and, and i tell you that you don't if you don't have a relationship with them if you are not speaking to them every day if you are not listening to them every day if you are not overfilled with joy in your heart you do not have them in your heart and um and, you, and that's something that I hope that I inspire you to want. Um, you know, and like I said, a lot of people think that they have God. And one day, it says in the Bible too, it says, I tell you, I do not know you, where you are from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. And that, what he's saying in this, uh, in this text is that one day, a lot of people are going to think that they're going to heaven. And Jesus is going to be like, who are you? I don't know you. Where did you come from? You never spoke to me in the last 10 years. Like, I don't know you. So what if you went to church once a week? You still didn't speak to me. We didn't have a relationship. So why, why would I take you home with me? You know, and it's like, you have to really sit down and think about these things about how would your father in heaven feel? And how would you feel as a mother or as a father, if your child was acting the way you are acting towards your father? So I hope this is like stirring up a little bit of things in you and, um, and if, you know, come back a bit to the Catholic church. I don't want to bash the Catholic church, but you know, you have to know the truth and the truth will set you free because, um, you know, it's if statues, for example, do you know that in other churches, they don't have statues. If you, you know, it's, I, I was shocked. I tell you, I went in other churches. I looked around and see what they had. They don't have any statues of Mary and the saints or there's not even a uh, Jesus on the crucifix. And do you know why? Because it says in the Bible in Exodus 24, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them, nor serve them. I mean, there again, it is, you know, things that we're doing in the Catholic Church that is wrong. We are not supposed to have a carved image of anything. So that's, uh, I believe it, it also includes the crucifix that we have up in the church. And, um, you know, what is that reminding us when we see Jesus on the cross? He reminds us, it reminds us of his death. We are not supposed to remember his death. Do you know what we're supposed to remember? We are supposed to remember his resurrection. He is alive. He is alive. And that's what we're supposed to be celebrating is his life, not his death. Um, what else did I have here that I wanted to say? some things I've already said. So I want you to know that um, there's a lot of things that the Catholic Church are doing that is unbiblical. Another thing that is so, so, so important is the baby baptism. And I'm going to, you know, uh, talk about this over and over and over. And I have been for a long time and I'm going to keep saying it every week is it's not proper. In the Bible, there is no place where a, uh, a child is baptized. You all, it's always written, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. So repent means to go to God and say, look, you know what? I am sorry. I am so sorry. And the thing is, too, you have to remember, we are all sinners, every one of us. And even after Jesus shows up in our life and we are, you know, uh, saved, we are saved in that moment, but it's a walk. It's not like it's black and white, I'm in or, am I, or I'm out. You have to keep on walking the walk and talking uh, the talk. You just can't say, well, you know, I was dipped in water and I'm saved. That's it. It's over with. I'm, I can like rest now or continue to sin because it doesn't work that way. And you're always work, you know, walking towards God or you are walking away. So you have to, you have a choice at all, all the time. And don't judge people either about their walk. Everybody uh, falls back at some time, uh, at some point, and nobody's perfect. But if they're at least trying, encourage them, encourage them on their walk. And know that uh, you are not completely saved 
I don't believe this anyway. I don't believe we're completely saved until the end. When Jesus comes back, we are, we'll know then if we're saved or not completely. But until then, don't ever take anything for granted and keep walking the, you know, your walk. Um, it's very important to, to, um, to say that it, Jesus said that, you know, um, unless you are born of water and the spirit, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And um, what that means is that you need to be baptized in water. And the word baptism actually means immersion. You need to be fully immersed in water to not sprinkle like a baby, you know, fully immersed in water to receive the, um, to die with Christ and to rise with Christ and to receive the Holy Spirit. You have to have that. Otherwise, you know, the, the, the people like in the Catholic Church that believe that they have the Holy Spirit, they don't have it because they haven't repented. If you, if your life is the same as it's always been, you're depressed, you're anxious, you're fearful, you're full of doubt, you're full of anger and resentment. I don't care. Like if you've got all those emotions going on, you don't have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit really comes in and uh, fills up all that space inside of you. Jesus sets you free. When you accept Jesus into your life, and you are born again in water and the spirit, meaning you've been baptized in the water and you receive the Holy Spirit, you will no longer have all these negative emotions because God is going to, you know, flush all that away. That is all going to die in the water. It's such an amazing thing. And, <clears throat> you know, it's been 10 months since Jesus showed up in my life. And I tell you, 10 months ago, and when he wanted me to talk about it, I'm like, no, 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 no. I cried for two days. I was not going to do this. And as time went by, the more I learned and the more I studied, I realized what a privilege, what a privilege it is to be chosen by God to share his love with you. And, you know, it really is a privilege and to feel his love to experiencing it experience it myself and and have this whole new world this whole new family of people that love god um it's something that is irreplaceable and there's such joy in it that you don't care about anything else like i don't care about money i don't care about um the material world anymore it's not important I'm, I'm so filled with love and joy that the only thing I want to do is do good in God's name. That's all that really matters. And, and that's what I wish for every one of you. I wish for all of you to wake up in the morning and to be filled with joy, have a balance in your step, and you'd want to get out there and live and, and do good for other people. Um, there's so much to do. There's so much to do. And you know, the amazing thing that came to me in my mind lately is that um, if the whole world was really, really, you know, focused on God, uh, in love with God and glorify God the way we're really meant to, that's what it's all about. Everything he's made was for him and, uh, it was to glorify him. Everything glorifies him. We are supposed to glorify him in the way we, we are in our lives and, uh, and, and in our lives, like we're supposed to sing to him, we're supposed to pray to him and talk to him. And our life is supposed to be a demonstration of our love towards him. And I know it sounds crazy, but I know that's, that's the truth. That's the way it's supposed to be. And when you live your life that way, you have such joy and such fulfillment that nothing else, nothing else replaces it, I tell you. And I just so want everybody else to be filled with this kind of love. And because there's a peace that nothing can take away from you. It doesn't matter what happens when you have the Lord in your life and you have the Jesus in your heart, nothing can take that away from you. And I don't know why anybody would want to choose to live any other way. And um, I'm just so happy that he showed up and I just want to share his love with everybody. I want to inspire other people to invite him into your lives uh, to want to experience this too, because I tell you, there's nothing, nothing that's going to make you happier than to have Jesus in your life. And 
what we've had up until now in our town, I tell you, um, I, I, people know I was the most spiritual, the most religious person in this town. I'm probably like a uh, soul of Tartus, I suppose, in that way. And, um, and I had no spirituality, nothing compared to what I have now because I have Jesus. It's totally different. It's totally different. And, you know, I think, uh, yeah, I think I'll wrap it up for, <laughs> with that for now because I have another live in French in a few minutes. But I encourage you all to seek God on your own. And if, if no matter what you're going through, if your children have problems, if uh, you have relationship problems, if you're sick, if you're, you know, have money problems, whatever it is, I challenge you to sit down and to speak to God and ask him to come into your life. Ask him to show you the truth and pick up the New Testament for yourself and, um, and read it. And he will show you the truth. I started watching near-death experiences. It just showed up on my Facebook page. And as I watched that, it led me one thing to another. And so many people died and crossed over and either went to hell or they saw Jesus. And every story I saw made me realize there's really something more to life than this. And you want to get it right, I can tell you, because you don't want to go to hell. And uh, some of you might think that it's not real, it doesn't exist, but I tell you it does. It really does. And Satan is real as well. And I didn't want to believe it. Like when Jesus first told me the truth about that, I did not want to believe it. But I challenge you to look it up for yourselves. Go on Google, go on YouTube and, uh, and, and see it's all there. And more importantly than that, read the New Testament for yourself. Don't believe a word I say. Don't believe a thing I say. And don't believe anything anybody else says. Read it for yourself. And when you start reading it, I promise you that the Lord will show up in your life and uh, you will know, you will know that he is the truth. So with that, uh, I'm going to leave you today and I hope that, uh, that it was good and you enjoyed it and that um, and I see that the internet worked out pretty good this morning. So I should be here again next Sunday and we'll continue the conversation. All right. So I love you and God loves you. More importantly, Jesus loves you. And I encourage all of you to open your heart and your ears and uh, just seek him out because he says you know knock and the door will be open and seek and you shall find so uh, i encourage you to seek him so have a wonderful sunday and a wonderful week and i'll talk to you again next week bye bye